This panel uh, presentations is this panel are uh, inevitably intertwined. So what I will be emphasizing is somehow already uh, uh, was already mentioned uh, uh, today. The real issue that I want to target for a few minutes, just 10 minutes, no more, is the issue of cultural diversity. We speak about digital single market in a field where culture is as important as market when it, when it comes to values. So when Eleonora mentioned, asked whether or not this is a dream, in the field of copyright it's particularly true in the sense that do we need a digital single market? Do we, are, you, are we curious and open <coughs> enough? Do, you feel, do we feel European already or not? I'm skeptical about that. Um, especially when it comes to the uncertainty with which the engine of regulation, which is the European Commission, uh, if we look at how it is proceeding uh, in a way that is not strong, we couldn't expect very much strength from the Barroso Commission, probably the, the weakest, politically, politically weakest commission we, we, we ever had in Europe. With the Juncker, Juncker Commission, we, are, I mean, we, we, we expect stronger action, Lots of uh, declarations, lo lots of announcements, little substance, as we, as we will see. So I wanted just to remind you of the fact that we are using this hashtag for the day, for the entire day, so please uh, uh, feel free to comment on Twitter. It's copyright TCD. Uh, there are already uh, uh, members of the audience uh, who are using this uh, hashtag, so please use it because it's important also to expand the debate to the online environment. So uh, we know that there is an unsettled issue between copyright and the EU, copyright and geography. There is an issue with territoriality that uh, Felice mentioned uh, with, with uh, particular uh, effectiveness, I, I would say. I'm uh, one of the co-authors of the studies that uh, Felice mentioned. Uh, we, we were asked by the European Parliament Research Service to measure to a little bit uh, the effectiveness and the coherence and the relevance of the actual legislation in order to see whether or not an improvement is needed. And obviously we said uh, yes to the, to, the end, to the question about whether or not we need to, to act. Uh, and we said that the actual framework, the, 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 the framework we have at the moment is not satisfactory in many ways. It doesn't make anyone happy. That's a real issue. Neither right holders nor consumers even less the technology companies. Uh, we have an issue when it comes to uh, availability of content on, of, uh, on, online, which is uh, um, geo-blocking. Geo-blocking is, uh, is, is probably the most evident consequence <coughs> that you have to face whenever you want to access content in a legitimate way. Because here there is also the issue of you know, accessing content anyway in an illegal way because technology is by far superior to any kind of regulation. So the issue is that if we do not make it sure that the copyright uh, uh, framework gets you know, fit for purpose, the real challenge is that we don't put the, uh, the, the market players in a position to make copyright credible. That's a, a real issue. So we are far from enacting uh, copyright titles in, in Europe. So when I, when I, whenever I start lecturing here to non-European <laughs> students, one of the very first things I have to say, we don't have a copyright system in, in Europe. We have subsystems at national level that have become increasingly similar to each other, but still with very significant uh, discrepancies and, and, and differences. And the inability of the governments and of the parliament members that have to approve the commission proposals about copyright is probably due to the fact that they, they see, the politicians see copyright as one of those fields in which they still retain some discretion, some freedom, some ab ability also to uh, rank certain values. Uh, we shouldn't forget that there are certain economies, certain jurisdictions in Europe where cultural uh, goods and cal in, in, in entertainment and in general all what is protected by copyright is definitely more important economically than the digital economy and the technology ma market uh, itself. So um, when it comes to uh, countries like France, like, uh, like Italy for instance, a little bit more old-fashioned than other countries, but terribly jealous of their, of their um, productions. To such an extent that Leonora mentioned these countries as the countries which are least 
friendly when it comes to freedom of panorama. They end up protecting also their cultural heritage with a sort of para copyright in the sense that they also protect um, um, monuments, sculptures, and you know landscapes that are obviously not protected by copyright, but they want to keep control. And they obviously, they, they are not efficient enough, they are not careful enough at monetizing this kind of uh, para copyright. Um, the most important piece of legislation we have in Europe at the moment doesn't mention culture uh, anywhere. This is just a, uh, uh, um, a recital in the preamble of the Information Society Directive where the word culture is mentioned. So you understand that 15 years ago, uh, the, the importance of the, of the cultural value behind copyright was underestimated. Um, the idea was that by affording a very, very strong, for someone excessively strong, protection of copyright, there would have been an immediate and automatic support to cultural uh, uh, creations. There was a sort of equation. You afford more copyright. Copyright is threatened by the digital environment because you know, the digital environment makes uh, copying and uh, disseminating work uh, um, cheap and, and, and you know, uh, easy. Uh, so more copyright protection means more uh, a stronger support to the cultural uh, economy, to the, to, the, to, the, to the creative sector. It's not like that. Um, if you consider that all the legislation that we have in force um, is uh, justified in terms of legal basis by the attempt of the EU to create a single market, but this is a legal basis that started being relied upon in the 90s, you understand that uh, uh, if the Commission is working just now, in 2016, about the digital single market, there is something that went awry in the past. <laughs> because the, the issue, the priority of affording stronger protection of, to copyright prevailed over the purpose of ensuring cross-border um, portability, access, trade. We are talking about small things. Uh, Eleonora and Felicia mentioned this uh, proposal on portability. Um, it's, uh, it's embarrassing how modest this proposal is. Uh, it's a, uh, Felicia also said we are writing together a, a commentary. Uh, we are uh, holding a, an event on, in Brussels on Monday with Julia Reda, who is one of the uh, um, parliament members who is most uh, active in this field, about whether or not there might be a significant impact of this uh, uh, regulation, if the regulation were approved on the uh, existing framework. We say, well, if the regulation will be approved uh, strictly, I mean, it's a modest thing. It's, a, it's a, just a way to let subscribers to Netflix and Spotify and other content uh, uh, services uh, just be available for these subscribers whenever they do tourism, traveling, but probably for a couple of weeks, this term is not defined in the regulation. It's one of the flaws of the regulation. We have to be fixed. In the commentary we are writing with Felice, and it will be available next week, we are saying that it, the commission probably didn't want to determine this term because it wanted to leave this hot potato to the lawmakers, to the parliament, and to the, to the government. Uh, and if you read a resolution, <coughs> an important resolution approved by the parliament in uh, July 2015, it was the amended version of the so-called RIDA, Giulia Reda report. You, <coughs> you find a very, very strong uh, um, uh, willingness to protect territoriality. So what are we talking about? Digital single market cannot, the digital single market in the way my, my, my fellow speakers uh, uh, explained it, cannot subsist, cannot exist efficiently if we still keep territoriality as a sort of uh, you know, holy element of copyright. We have, we are forced by keeping territoriality uh, so um, at such a, a strong level of protection to find a way to bypass this in, in, thing, in ways that are far too modest to achieve uh, to achieve the results that the digital single market would entail. Um, 
the real issue, in my view, is, you know, the commission is, the, the behavior of the commission is contradictory. Because, you know, the commission, whoever goes to Brussels and interacts with the commission knows that pretty well. The commission is a bureaucratic monster. Uh, the, dif the different directorate general sometimes do not speak not enough to each other. So what is happening in the copyright framework when it comes to legislative proposals is what we have seen, little. When it comes to what the Commission is doing as an antitrust authority, is potentially big, potentially disruptive in the close future of the principle of territoriality, in a way that might, maybe the Parliament might not be happy about it. Because we know that there, 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 is, there is an action of the Commission against the, the uh, um, agreements that uh, allow and create this absolute territorial exclusivity, what Felice mentioned, the idea that Sky UK, while getting a license for Ireland and, and UK uh, uh, when it comes to exploitation of movies, is not entitled contractually to let anyone who's not physically resident in UK and Ireland to access the TV services that incorporate all the uh, Hollywood uh, uh, movies. These, uh, these, these kind of agreement, uh, according to, to the Commission, that is a, a, a statement of objection that was sent last uh, July, might be infringing of antitrust law, might be regarded as uh, an illegal restriction of the freedom to provide services. So it has to be seen how this uh, 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 action uh, develops. Just to conclude a couple of minutes, uh, I wrote a paper on geoblocking uh, and I, I asked in this paper whether or not ge it's geoblocking the, is the issue for concern or it's something else. Well, geoblocking is, is, is certainly an issue for concern, but it's not the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem is certainly territoriality, the ambiguity with which the policy and lawmakers are treating the issue. It's the elephant in the room, basically. But I tried uh, uh, um, to think about, and this is my last remark, about the justifications for geoblocking that are by far the, also the justification for uh, territoriality. There are certain sectors, especially the audiovisual sector, and in particular the film sectors, in which territoriality is regarded by copyright holders as something without which production would not be possible and exploitation would not be efficient because they say uh, we target, especially the independent producers from, from Europe, we target different uh, audiences. We have multiple audiences. French movie is probably more, uh, more easily appreciated by French viewers or Belgian viewers or people who are fluent in French. They enjoy the, uh, um, watching the movie in the original language and so forth. We have to consider in the film uh, market that four of the five biggest markets in Europe, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain, in these countries, dubbing and subtitles, <coughs> together with other forms of content versioning, are still not, you know, uh, important but indispensable for, for, the, for the audiovisual works in a way that content needs to be adapted. So what I want to say, just to conclude my presentation, is that in order to have a digital single market in, uh, uh, in the field of cultural goods and entertainment works, we don't need just the law. We certainly need a more straightforward approach, a less ambiguous, uh, a, a, a less modest approach. We need also to bet a little bit of the on the cultural integration of Europe. Because obviously, today it's much more likely that the young generations, the, 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 the young people sp speak more than one language, are happy to watch movies uh, in original languages, or are happy enough with subtitles. There are, as I said, there are the most important, from a quant quantitative point of view, markets in Europe where Subtitles are not enough. So, to such an extent that there is a sub-industry, which is the, in the dubbing industry, that in certain countries, like Italy, for instance, is, is very um, important and well-developed because there are professional actors working in this field that obviously would suffer from the uh, 
pan-European distribution of movies. So all these things make politicians very shy and very reluctant uh, to go for the digital single market in a straightforward and uh, you know, ambitious way. Thanks a lot.